What's good, YouTube? Akil here, back with another video. And today, got a very, very special guest with you guys for you guys here today. Um, as you guys can see, um, if you're just now looking at the stream, I just switched things up a little bit. I've been trying to figure out a name for this series because, as you guys know, if you guys been following the channel for a while, I've been doing a lot of um, primarily, you know, trips to the thrift, um, what so video stuff like that. But as you guys know. Um, people evolve. I've evolved. I've started other businesses now. So I want to start switching the focus, still business related, still entrepreneurship. But I want to, of course, introduce you guys to some of my friends, some of my family, people that I respect, people that I admire. And one of those people for sure is Samuel Boache, uh, founder of Quasi Paul. He's founder of several different businesses. I'll let, I'll let him speak about that in a minute. But just wanted to um, have him here on the channel. He's not a reseller. So the conversation might be a little different, but I still think you guys would be able to gain uh, some some good knowledge, some good inspiration from him as well. So I'm going to be adding him to the stream here in a second uh, so that you guys can meet Samuel Boache. What's going on, brother? What's going on, bro? <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Yeah, and I'm glad you're here, bro. Everything is, everything is good. Um, man, I feel like we've been having some crazy conversations, some amazing conversations these past couple uh, just these past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I got to share some of this, some of this game that we both kind of sharing with each other. I got to share this wow. with the audience because I think they can learn from it. So uh, uh, introduce yourself, you know, let them know who you are and what you do. Yeah, man. Um, I'm Sam. First and foremost, as mentioned earlier, Sam Boacha, born in New York, parents from Ghana, West Africa. So that's where my roots are. I am the creative director of Quissy Paul, also founder of Quissy Paul. It's a men's wear and women's wear label that's really blending African and black culture all in one. What we're doing is exploring that friction. Um, according to Akil, I'm a founder of a few things as well too, but right now my main focus is Quasi Paul and I think throughout the conversation, you'll also start to see how everything else kind of flows. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. I, I'm, I'm loving what you're doing with the brand. I, you know, I've been following the brand from when you had the name changes Yes. To the, the bomber jackets, the t-shirts. I just mm -hmm. I just love the progression of how things have been going for you. Um, I know I tell people all the time that that you gotta make pivots when it comes to business, but share some of the pivots that you had to make throughout this time. Yeah, man. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> start from I mean, as far back as you start, want. We could start at Quincy Paul and we could start at Lee F. Gauthier. Like you, Yeah, you start know? start there. I think that'll kind of tie in nicely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, I'll try to I'll try to make it brief. So um, I had a friend of mine who was interested in fashion, and I had no interest in coming into the whole fashion space at all. The only mm -hmm. experience I knew was my mom. She was a designer graduate from FIT, so I, I seen it growing up. But um, I decided to give him a helping hand from the creative side, and then after a few projects, like I just fell in love with the process. So we created a brand called Leaf Code Chair. We did tons of college shows. You know, at the time, that was what was popping. Then we were also able to get a few placements. So Lashante, Tiana Taylor, um, Iman Shum, um, a few people, you know, in, in that whole celebrity space. So it started catching heat. And then after a while, just wanted to kind of tell my own story, do my own thing. So pivot away from the F-Coach here. Um, in between that whole space, it was just really like freelance and stuff. I was doing the fashion space, trying to t make you know learn a little bit more about the industry. Did a little bit of school, um, schooling and tailoring. Um, ended up working on nine to five for a B two B fashion business, and then was also taking wedding and graduation orders on the side for menswear suits. Mm. And then just I want to say about a little bit over a year, finally decided to come out with my own brand called Quincy Paul. And um, where that comes from, Quessy Paul is, I'm pretty much the byproduct of Quessy Paul. My, my mom and my dad infusing both names together and also just a representation of exploring that friction between African culture and Black culture. I love it. I love it. I think some of the pieces that the, some, the imagery is always big for me. And the yeah. photography, the, 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 in the African inspired apartments, it's like, you don't even, if you're from New York, you know, right? You know what I mean. And I think it's yeah. one of those things where 
people always say pictures speak a thousand say a thousand words mm -hmm. and just some of the photos you see in the nest quick in the corner yep. you know you see in the you, you see in the old school picture frames on the wall it's like i love it what 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 like you said it was inspired by you know african culture but what kind of made you want to take that direction with the brand it was a, it's a space i feel that's not told a lot mm -hmm. you know um like in particular, like firstborn generations, um, kids to African immigrants, we don't really talk about those stories a lot. It's either we focus a lot on black culture or we focus a lot on African culture, but we never explore that barrier. So I wanted to really tap into that. That's what I that's what I, I grew up on. You know, I grew up on being in the black household watching, you know, WB 11 in the morning, mm -hmm, hearing mm -hmm. my moms and my dads in my ear talking, you know, my language. And as soon as I step out the apartment, I'm in the back playing basketball at section two with my bros. And, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just like, I like that, yeah. I'm in two worlds at the same time constantly. And that was the fusion, you know, that, that's, that was my experience growing up. That's dope. I think that's one of the things that, like people don't even think about like how unique coming from New York or having, you know, immigrant parents. And like, I take so much of those, you know, so much of those experiences, so much of that, so much of the game, yeah. you know what I mean? And it just kind of like translate throughout everything that you do. And I will look at it, you know what I mean? The, the name, the, the, the photography, the everything, the design, like it's, it's all infused through it. So Congrats to you, brother. I'm, I'm loving it. it. I'm loving Thank it. You. Thank you. There's more to come. <laughs> more to come. So I know you got some big things coming up in uh in February. Talk about that. I know you got uh might be a big announcement. I don't know if you shared it yet, but you know, talk about some of the some of the moves that you got going on. Yeah. Um. So I got selected to do projects. One of the biggest trade shows in the world. So we'll be exhibiting in the Las Vegas from February 14th to 16th. So that's exciting, you know, being in, being, having Quincy Paul for a little bit over a year and just being given the opportunity to be in front of retailers like your Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale's of the world, Sen, Saks Fifth, super exciting. So that's been my main focus for the past couple months. It's been mm -hmm. hectic, it's been stressful, but the process is amazing. You live and you learn from it. That's what's up. I've been the Thank project. I forgot how long ago it was, maybe two years, three years ago I went to Project, but I was more so, like what you're doing is what, I wish I had more direction at Project. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more of a game plan because I just went as a blogger, you know, this was before the, in the term influencer was a thing. Yeah. Like, that's what's so crazy. So it's like I went there literally just on the hunt to see which brands I could work with and who could send me some free clothes. <laughs> like that was literally it. You know what I mean? But I think yeah. for you... Going to this trade show now, you're gonna get that exposure that you, you know, that you need. That's it, the experiences alone is gonna be huge. Um, of course. Talk talk about that. Like, what are you looking forward to in in the sense of the trade show space? Exactly what you said. Really, just the experience. But to be super transparent, I'm definitely looking for the the connections, the network, and having conversations with buyers. I mean, I have to take full advantage of it. You know, mm -hmm. like we are a D to C company. Um, but just being able to have a few relationships and partnerships with retailers, especially some that, you know, are my favorite is huge. Um, also like feedback, you know, these are people that have been playing in the space for tons of years. Yeah. So just being able to have this conversation with buyers, retailers, gain some feedback from it, from traction, mm -hmm. what are they looking for from brands without having to change my story, uh, my brand concept or whatnot. I'm super excited for that. And also it's Vegas. You know, I, I could use a, you know, three, nice four days. vacation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you I'm mean, away from the slot machines though. Um, last time <laughs> didn't go all that well. So <laughs> right, right, right. We're gonna stay away from the gambling. Don't wanna spend mm -hmm. that coin or lose that coin, I no, should no, say. No, no, no. The only coins we're doing is ETH and bit right now. Okay, so you in the crypto space. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm learning right now, but we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning too. I'm not, I'm not too big into it. I feel like I'm one of those people. I'm not yet. I'm a believer, but I'm not quite sold yet. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like I, I can see the potential. I see the utility in some of the coins. But for me, I'm kind of like, is it worth like, do I even have the funds to really make something shake with this? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I'm a believer. Um, I think about it like with taxis and Ubers, movie theaters and Netflix. Like I feel like just the same situation. You know what I'm saying? Just dollars in crypto. Mm. You know, like they say, you got to get on early. So that's what I'm doing. But I do think it's important to educate yourself in this space. Absolutely. Um, even the brand we've been exploring that as well too. That's like down the lane, but the whole NFT crypto space we want to see how we can infuse that and make it make sense at the same time mm. you know, because a lot of the the brands ethos and stories like tradition and when you have tradition and technology at the same time they don't mm. quite gel yeah. so, right yeah. trying to find that you know find that a uh, connection so my thing with the with the nfts um i view it more as like an experience thing you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's of course it's digital art. So I think that's kind of where it fits for your business, where it's like you selling clothes, clothes is art. Like at the end of the day, it coincides. But it's one of those things where it's also like you could start talking about this in a second as well for people that's in like the event space or just in the event management type of thing. Event was it event planning space? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what people want. Like they want to create that community. So I think NFTs. That's what we're looking into as well. Well, not yet. Later down the road for Flip Narrative, for the wine business, later down the road. But it's all about, you know, fostering that community, trying to bring people together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's that's the power of the NFTs that I think um, people probably aren't really thinking about too much. Yeah, there's there's tons of different types of NFTs, you know. Like, you also got, like, the Poe apps, which is something that, I've been exploring, um, speaking of the event space, we'll probably touch base later down the lane, but like utilizing the, you know, the, the PO apps for my events, um, starting to build that community, just people having, people having something to remember. Um, and then with the NFT, you know, we also do have an idea about how we want to go far with the community building. Cause just as much as it's important to build a brand, we're trying to also build a community and just kind of navigate through that, build more awareness. So, I mean, we can go for days about NFTs, you know? Yeah, I'm a rookie yeah. at the game, but, like, it's good to educate yourself on, like, where the world is headed to. Absolutely. So, I know I was you was kind of alluding to it, but said you found us, you're a founder of several different businesses. Uh, Quasi Paul is the close. Talk about, like, the event side of things that you're, that you're going to be. Well, you already launched it, so talk about the event side. Yeah, um, so I've been managing a DJ named Black Pages, um, one of the biggest DJs in LA, Afrobeats DJ, Ghanaian descent, just like myself. He's also a brother to me. Um, was actually recently filtered on um, Billboard as well, mm -hmm. too. They did a write-up on him. But I, I still have my my uh, my ears to the music scene. Like Prior to me getting into the fashion business, I played the right. keys with the saxophone group in the church. So the love for music is there. But... Um, I've been managing him. And then with Pussy Paul, we spoke about maybe curating some type of experience as a collab. So mm -hmm. it would be Black Pages featuring Pussy Paul. Then we would be doing these experiential events called Paradise 57. Mm -hmm. So Paradise 57 is literally like Pussy Paul's community. And what we're doing is just as much as I'm trying to showcase like the evolution of you know, black and African culture intertwined the brand. I'm doing that through food culture and sound through mm. Paradise 57. So creating a community where people can really celebrate the evolution of the African diasporic sound, soul, culture, oh, that's dope. all under one roof. So hopefully we can get flip the narrative, you know, in there, you know, as a shit. Hell yeah. Exactly. You know, just celebrate all of that under one roof. I think that's I think that's beautiful. I love that. I, I, and like we were talking about, you know, the different businesses and like, you know, we was kind of having a deep dive over the past couple of weeks in the sense of like yeah. stuff to do. But we could talk about some of that if you want to. I don't know if you want to be, you know, giving up too much game, but I like to just give all the value on the channel. When it come to me, when it come to like giving game, sharing any type of game that I got, any type of knowledge, I just like dropping it. 
But um, for me, it's one of those things where I love how it makes sense. Like yeah. it's two different worlds. It's two like event planning and fashion. It's two different things, but at the same time, it's culture. You know what I mean? And it still coincides. It still makes sense. And that's I think that's one of the things that anybody in business, there always comes a point where you're trying to, you kind of put yourself in a box. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. This is what I do. This is all I like. Like for me, like I'm a reseller. This is a reselling channel. This is what I do. But the bigger thing is business. The bigger thing is entrepreneurship. Right. You know? The freedom and the options that come with that. So it's just like incorporating the Paradise 57 is like you blend in two worlds, but it's really not two. It's you just shining a bigger light on it, really. Yeah, I look at Paradise 57 as a physical world for Quincy Paul. Because mm -hmm. um, even with Quincy Paul, what we're trying to do is through telling our stories, the experience of being firstborn, having to learn, live in the Western world and the West African world at once, we want right. to kind of create a bridge. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, we want to change the future. Like, I would love to be able to garnish as much as I can to create a better infrastructure in my mm -hmm. homeland and also use that to educate um, young Black folks in the States that want to maybe get in tune with more of the creative art scene, the fashion, you know, the fashion industry. I don't think there's no such thing as holding back. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I kind of see it as like, this is how we want to view the world as we can celebrate, we could drink, we could be married, we could listen to music, but we could also build for a better world. Mm. You know, like we could do all of that at once. No, so no, no. that's that's how I view it. Um, as far as like, you know, just that's concerned as far as like gems or whatnot, kind of alluding to what I said before, like, I don't want to be boxed. I don't want to feel like I only have to do one thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's an art collective. Mm. You know, like, when you look at, like, the Harlem Renaissance, it wasn't just Langston Hughes. It was poets, musicians, artists, so-and-so, but it's all under that realm. Right. I view art the same way where, yeah, I'm a fashion designer, but I could do music. You know, I could sketch. I might even get to ceramics. Right. But at That's the same right. time, it's all from the same soil. Mm. So, full, yeah. on, full on Renaissance, man. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Blending. My man said, I might even get into ceramics. <laughs> you never know. You never know. I love it. Because it's one of those things where it's like, just like you said, not limiting yourself, not putting, not putting yourself in a box. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we do that to ourselves. Where at the same where at the end of the day, it's like nobody's just a monolith. Everybody is comprehensive. You know, you got different stuff going on. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a you know what I mean? Right. I'm a son. You know what I mean? You got all those things. Yeah, but I think because we were programmed to think like that, especially for like um our folks, you know what I'm saying? Like we already got it hard as soon as we're born because we don't have the same opportunities, you know, that other right. folks have. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we're programmed to focus on one thing. And I'm a prime believer in that to a certain extent. Like, you could focus on one thing that's cool, but I don't think God's gave us just one talent. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? I also think there's a there's a crowd for everything. You know, there mm -hmm. might be a crowd that really rocks with your clothes. There might be a crowd that don't really care about clothes, but they love the culture and want to party. And then there right. might be a crowd that want to be homebodies and just make ceramics all day. <laughs> right, right. I mean, like, you're producing all three. So, like, why stop yourself? And you said it yourself. Right. If I could be a dad, a husband, um, a nine to five person, an entrepreneur. I don't see why I can't implement that within what I'm doing as an artist. Absolutely. So, what's your, so I know we were talking about this earlier in the week. What's your thoughts on? Cause I kind of battle with that where it's like, sometimes I'll say to myself, I have to focus on one thing at a time, master that, dominate that. And then anything else that comes from that is, it's almost like a tree, right? The, for me, the foundation was eBay and reselling. And then from there, one of the branches was YouTube. And yeah. then from there, another branch would be maybe Poshmark. And yeah. then, you know, another subsidiary all of that work is flip narrative is the wine so it's like what's your thoughts on 
Like, do you do you think that's important for people to kind of lock in at least for a period of time on one thing and then branch out, or should people just kind of test the market, see, figure it out, like sample here, sample there? I'm the wrong person to ask, just because I'm the type that is all <laughs> over the place all the time, you know. But I will say this: just you know, being here on this on this planet Earth, talking to successful people some will tell you focus on one thing but there's others that will tell you otherwise you know like mm -hmm. i think it really just depends on you as a person there are some people that need to focus on one thing and then let that blossom and use that as sort of a catapult for the other things there's some people that need to test things all at once because maybe they're still finding themselves in the process or that's just how their brain operates. True. You know, you have some people like they might just get bored focusing on one thing. Or like, if I'm doing like five things at once as a creative, that's really gonna like start to really like cook up all these juices because you might find that man, like I didn't realize that I could do this here. Oh, you know what? I could kind of implement this in this sector. Oh mm. wow, that gives me another idea. Next thing you know, you you're creating a whole. I don't know, like light. It's almost like it's almost like gumbo. <laughs> yeah, you know, they you know, so I I think for me personally, the way I program, the way I operate, if I'm just focused on one thing, it doesn't move me, you mm -hmm. know. Um I focus on what I'm good at, fashion and music, and mm -hmm. then let's see what happens after that. Um so yeah, I think what will give people advantage though, if they can kind of find out how all of that intertwines. So I think that's perfect. Finding that relationship between everything you do. You right. know, I knew you as that advisor. You know what I'm saying? The suits, rocking right. the smooth shoes, being an influencer to people that's trying to look like you and dress like you. Now you have flip the narrative. I don't I don't see that as something that's far off. You know, like right. suits wine smooth <laughs> it works <laughs> perfectly you know right. so why not what's your what's your thoughts on because you said a couple of things that had me really thinking you're one of those people that i always like glean from in the sense of like building a team yeah and i think when somebody like you that's a creative and you might have you know you kind of juggling five different ideas or five different businesses or concepts I think one thing that helps you is that you build, you, you like you find community, you find people that's like, they might be a little more knowledgeable on something than you are. And you kind of like bring them in quickly. Like yeah. talk, talk about that. Talk about that mindset. Cause I know just from like a reselling perspective, everybody typically tries to do everything by themselves. Right. But I think it's power in building teams. You know what there I mean? It is. If you want to go fast, you go by yourself. But if you want to go far, you build a team. Oof. Exactly that. You know what I'm saying? Like you you can't expect the car to like you you just can't have one part to a car. It's gonna have a motor, tires, steering wheel, and, and that's what moves a car. Like you right. can have a, a Lambo with no engine, you ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's a fact. So like I think team building is important, especially when you want to get to the next stage. Like Obviously, you, you, you might want to just try things by yourself in the very beginning. That's what I was doing. I didn't need nobody to be in a room with me when I was tailoring suits. But once I knew that I wanted to reach out to a mass and I wanted to get my stuff out there, man, I should probably look into a social media person or mm -hmm. I should probably look into somebody to handle my finances, my accountant, or mm -hmm. you know what? I can only do five suits in one day. I'm getting the order of a hundred. I need to go look for a manufacturer or like I only have two parts of a brain. I should probably bring on another designer on with me so we could really, really exchange thoughts. I think for me too, I like working in groups. I'm a team player. Mm. And like when you have a collective of people, you know, that share the same vision, you can make magic. Absolutely. So I'm all for teams. Like I don't know one person in the industry that's been able to do everything by themselves from start to finish. They might be the, the face, but if you look at the directory, they have a director of this, they have a director of that, the CFO, 
um, you know, like chief of operations, like I yeah. think it's just damn nearly and nearly impossible. That that's just hearing you say that, because I'm still stuck on the if you want to go far, <laughs> you build a team. Yeah. Bringing it back to like the reselling thing, because I know that's the that's the community, that's the people that's listening right now. Most people that get into business, they literally want to do everything by themselves. So for this business in particular, you shipping all your orders, you taking all your pictures, you doing you you doing all your accounting, you're taking all the photographs, you're running around doing all the sourcing. That's literally five different jobs. That sounds like five, Jesus. Sound like what? That sound like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's one of those it's one of those career paths, and it's one of those uh. I guess you call it an industry. One of those industries where it's like you literally condition yourself to do so many things by yourself. But then you see other people that are su super successful. If one of the first things they do is they'll hire either some contractors or some part time help. They'll, you know, start working with some manufacturers or some wholesalers so they can get stuff coming to them. And I think that's the stage where I'm at now. That's why once you said that, it resonates with me so much. I'm like, damn, I need to really start thinking bigger, start bringing in a team. Right. Um, I look at things also like exponential, like energy exponential, right? Like I'm a creative director. Like that's my title. Whatever I do, whether it's ceramics, music, fashion, I'm a creative director. I like to direct. I'm a creative. I need to be able to have the energy to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. I could shoot though. I picked up a camera before. I did street photography before. I've, I've done photography for businesses. Um, I could do a lot of things. I could do social media. I've done freelancing for, you know, brands, high conversations. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, like, going back to when you said focus, right, I think somewhere down the line, you got to figure out, like, okay, I could probably do a lot of things, but, like, what am I really good at across all verticals, which is creative mm. Um, so for me personally, like I can do my own social media, my own photography and whatnot, but like, I need that energy to focus on the creative direction aspect. That's one part. But the other parts to it is the simple fact that there's always going to be somebody better than you. And I want the best of the best, you know? So like, okay, you're a photographer, you know how to shoot, but like there's certain things that somebody does with a camera right that you might not know of yeah social media you know what you like you know what content you want to take but there's certain algorithms and data insights that you have to constantly look at or study to make sure that your post is getting this amount of reach mm -hmm. you might be able to count your books but like you tell me you're going to create do photography and look at your books all day <laughs> hell no and, and if you so, do it, it ain't going to be good. <laughs> right. You know, you're going to have to keep amending your taxes and all of that. So, like, I, that that's that's the twofold to it. You know, like, part of building a team is also not being afraid to work with people that's better than you because you're going to get the best of the best. Regardless, it's not about the ego aspect of what you do as a business person. It's about the greater good. I want the best business. I want people to know that this is the best work that I'm putting out there for I'm creating a team of the best people. Mm. That's how I look at it. But there's no timetable for creating a team. I think one will know when it's time. Like it's either you're going to realize that I'm tired or like you've been seeing this photographer do something. You want to do something like that. Or like if social media is not getting where it needs to be or you realize you're missing numbers in your books. Yeah. It's going to be a time where you really think about it like, you know what? I think it's time. And then also, like, when the money start coming in, obviously, you either have a conversation about equity or you have a conversation about hiring people. Mm. So you just know. How do you go about, like, finding people to to bring on, on board? Because I've been in the game five years now. I've had my wife help, and then she's made pivots and started, you know, taking more of a lead in terms of the wine. Like, she's really running that. But it's one of the things where it's like, I'm trying to think from like somebody else's perspective that's that's watching this right now. And they're like, 
I'm um I'm a busy parent. I'm working a nine to five. I'm trying to make this eBay business pop. I don't even know where to look for a, a part time help or an extra hand. Like, how do you even navigate that? What's like some steps that you take? I don't know if anybody has this advantage, but like, I think for one, when you're a startup, I think tapping into your circle is first and foremost very important because within your circle, you're going to have people that's going to tell you constantly, like, yo, I really like what you're doing. You know, like, can I help? And you just have that conversation. You also can't expect that they're going to be there from the long run. Some people are just there for a moment, and that's okay, mm -hmm. you know? So that's one thing. And the other thing is just asking. Like, they say, ask and you shall receive, you know what I'm saying? You got to knock or else the door is going to stay closed forever. Mm -hmm. So just outside of reaching out to your network, just being out in the network and just looking for people that you think will be a good fit, looking at their portfolio, looking at, what they've done in the past, what yeah. um, companies that, that they've worked with before. And then trial and error, you know, like test it out. You're probably never going to find a perfect team at the first try, but you might just get the perfect set of photos, you know, the perfect <laughs> right. set of content for that first quarter. That's a lot better than doing all of that by yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's a good point. That's, a, well, yeah. that's, that's an amazing point because I was just thinking of from the, the wine business perspective, I've been taking pictures for years, probably over 10 years I've been behind the camera taking pictures, shooting, doing stuff. But one of the first things Dom did was hire um, like these girls that do uh, social media. They're like social media managers and mm -hmm. they're creatives as well. So they take the pictures for the wine and they they just have a vision. You know what I mean? And it's one of those things where if you go on the website right now, the, the pictures that I was going to put up and the pictures that they created is night and day. Like, I'm sure people come on the website and say, oh, these pictures is nice. The pictures I would have put up would have been trash. <laughs> and I think about it. You know what I mean? So sometimes you got to kind of almost see it for, for the task. Take it task by task. Yeah. And I, I think to your point, like the whole night and day, Sometimes what's beautiful about art, because that's what I'm going to call it, right, is that people will interpret it in different ways. We could both look at this piece right here, and the minute somebody looks at it, oh, she got a fat butt. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? If I put the camera up, is actually somebody playing the keys for shorty. Mm. You know, like, how do you interpret that? What time of day did it happen? When did it happen? Mm. Who is she to him? You know, but we, we can all see that he's clearly playing the keys for shorty. Right. I think the other benefit about like a team is like you'll have somebody that will interpret your vision so differently, right? Mm. But it still meets the standards and it becomes such like a beautiful project in a sense because it was like, man, I ain't see it that way. Like I didn't realize you could take this photo from this angle. It captures it in a whole different aesthetic. I didn't see it that way. Yeah. But they still took a picture of your wine bottle. Right. So it still meets the standards for what you're looking for. And then once they interpret it and it comes mm -hmm. back to you, that also sparks your ideas. And like based off of what they did, I could do it like this. And then it's a constant conversation. And the next thing you know, you either have a pool of ideas, or you have a whole vision that's greater than what you thought of before. Mm. So that's how I view it, you know, like think of it as like an evolution as well, too. Like things are constant changing, but it, it's still a, a masterwork of art. Mm. You know what I'm saying as long as it's delivering the same message, there's nothing wrong with that. I love that. I love that. This is eye opening for me because it's just like I know I've been saying you know, I need to build a team. You know, I got to hire a contractor. It's like I need uh, it's not enough hours in the day. Especially now, you know, with Sage, I'm like constantly trying to run around, but like I'm gonna take all of that into consideration and I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a play on that soon. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. You have Sage, you know, so you're in a whole different ball game. Like there's there's people that have families. Yeah. And you you like there's no doubt about it, you have to make time for your family. So that's a fact. That's something that you are committed to. Like you are responsible for somebody's life. That's so you, it's, you can't play Superman 
sometimes you got to be Clark. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I throw the glasses on. <laughs> yeah, you know, but who knows? Maybe the rest of the, what is it? Not the Avengers, but whoever they are in DC can help out a little bit while you take a break. I don't know. Right, right. Look at it. Nah, that's that's for me that's that's huge for me right now especially this stage in life that's that's everything because it's like i very well could have been i very well could be that dad that's just grind 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 hustle 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 she's like even in my mind like i, I tell people all the time and i was telling you i took that part-time i took that full-time job because i was like oh i'm gonna do both i'm gonna put in even more work i'm gonna work a job and i'm gonna lock in on ebay and i'm gonna just be so busy and make more money, but it's just like doing that would take away from this whole the 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 journey. You know what I mean? Of like watching her grow, like yeah, being that family man that I want to be. You know what I mean? So that's what's up. That. Yeah, I can't I can't comment too much on that because I'm not there yet. But I would I would think that it's almost like taking anything else that just means more attention in a sense, right? So you have to kind of go back to the drawing board and you have to figure out, well, this needs this much time. Right. So how can I give this part of my life as much attention without maybe giving it all my time? Right. If that makes sense. Some, It's, it's almost like a switch, right? So yeah. for me, what it was in the beginning, it was like, it's it, me. It's just me and Dom. It's no grandparents. It's no like nannies and stuff like that. So it's like it's just me and her. Mm -hmm. And of course, in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah. Once we have the baby, Dom will just be taking care of that, and I'm gonna just still be working. And it's just like, nah. <laughs> like raising a child from day one is all hands on deck. When they when yeah. people say it, it takes a tribe, takes a village, like that's a fact. So it was more so me taking that step back. And then pouring that energy into her, both Dom and and into Sage, and building that foundation. You know what I mean? The same foundation I built with with this business. How I'm able to work sometimes three or four hours a day and get twelve hours worth of work done. Yeah, I have to set that foundation and like really put that time in. And like I say all the time, she's only going to be this small, but for so long. Right. And you then know, things will change. She'll be in school. You have to go to parent teacher conferences. Like, you have to read her books at night. You know what I'm saying? Make sure, mm -hmm. like, a whole, whole bunch of other stuff. The reason why I said, like, well, one, I can't speak on it because I don't have kids. But right. even where I'm at in life right now, I still need to build that foundation for myself. I, I'm thinking that there'll be a time where I'm like, okay, I can invite a family now to my life. Right. Right now where I'm at, there's still so much building I feel like I need to do right now um, before that becomes that. Because I know that's, <laughs> real. that's a whole nother, whole nother ball game. Yeah, that's real. And I, and I love that. I love the fact that you know that. Like, you're aware enough to know, like, yo, this is not the time. No. Like, some people we get so caught up in, like, they'll see a nice family photo on Instagram and they'll be like, oh, yeah, this is what I want, goals. And it's just like, nah, like sometimes, especially for men, I feel like we have to build, like mm -hmm. we have to lay the foundation. We have to put in the work before, yeah. especially as, as young black men, so many of us never had a father. So it's like, we got to do the internal work before we even say, all right, I'm about to have, start having a family and all that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a hustle. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's a part of it too. Damn, even just thinking about that, it's like, <laughs> like family's like in doctrine, so it's always been a hustle. Now it's just right. about time management. That's a fact. I yeah, got man. a question in here. Let me see. My boy Derek, who's better at basketball, Akil or Samuel? <laughs> <laughs> right now, you better than me for sure. He said, "Right for now, sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure." You give me, a, you give me a few months. Let me get back in the gym. The thing is, my cardio is good. Cause I still run, I still I'm, I'm jumping rope, but my shot will not fall. <laughs> I don't remember your shot ever falling. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, my jumper used to be wet. <laughs> I was in air, but I was Chef Curry before Chef Curry. Don't leave it at that, man. But uh, watching, 
watching these kids play today is 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 like you still hoop or not? Nah, man, nah. Oh, like, no, no. I love the game. I grew up right. in left the city, you know. That's right. all we knew growing up. But right, I don't hoop no more. Hopefully, my my um, I have a nephew on the way. You probably gonna call him Duke. So mm-hmm. hopefully, he start hooping. Get him a little Duke jersey when he's born. Nah, that would be dope. That would be dope. Yeah, like I, I watch these kids. Like I'm, of course, I'm in the gym a few times a week. So at night, I'll see them hooping in there. But basketball today, like today's game, is so just different. And to me, of course, I sound like the old guy, but I just don't like it. Like oh, wow. it's, it's no defense. Like I, I watch NBA. I'm, I watch the NBA, but watching like people play ball now, it's trash. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like this season, I'm specifically talking about the NBA, is is kind of. 360, like they they look they definitely playing defense. Some boys is playing hard. Them boys are talented. They are also really athletic, so that makes it really fun. But it looks like this season's getting a little bit more tough, like more physical. Yeah, yeah. That's I, not, I've been catching some of the games, and I'm like, oh, oh, these boys ain't playing. You yeah. know, like, they not like. You know, there was a time when like you know high fiving and hugging and stuff like that. Like they coming at each other's necks. I I, yeah. I actually am a fan. Of this generation, not well, gonna lie. Well, let me well let me preface it first because I'm a fan of the NBA and I like what they're doing now in terms of like you know letting letting players play defense. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the refs is not is not getting in the way. What I'm talking about when I said today's game, this generation, the kids that's playing basketball, they don't play defense. All they do is shoot threes. No one even drives in the paint. No one shoots mid range. It's like, yo, it's a one-sided thing. You either shoot a three, run back down there, shoot a, miss you another three. It's like, <laughs> it's just all misses. But we could play devil's advocate. You got somebody like Chef Curry who came and changed all of that. Right. Of course, before in the game, you'd have your Reggie Millers and your Ray Allens. You knew what they was good for. Right, especially. Now you got Giannis pulling up, shooting a three. Why? Because I don't got to get banged up in the paint. Let me hit this three. Also, that makes me a lot more versatile. So it makes me more of a threat. Right. You know, so I think the game has changed because people are realizing that to shoot the three consistently, it requires a skill. Yeah. But this is a skill I definitely want to develop more because one, it's going to put up more points. And two, it's going to refrain me from getting injured. So I, I, I see where you're saying. I think. You got players that have really taken it to the next level, almost like kind of taking advantage of the game. But yeah, back to evolution, you know, things change. And like, yo, if it's easier for me to put up 10 threes and make six out of them and not get hurt and miss a whole season, why not? You see, that's where that's where the piece for me where I'm like, that's what I got to push back. Because if you got somebody like Steph Curry, you got somebody like, uh, what's the name? You got Clay. You know, mm-hmm. early on in Draymond Correa, he could shoot the three. He ain't really shooting it like that no more. But if you got shooters on your squad, by all means, shoot. You got these kids, just like these some of these NBA players. They don't they don't got the skill, but because they out of that ten, Steph and them is making about seven, eight. Some of these people, they out of that ten, they making one. Kids ain't gonna get drafted them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, let's be real. I feel like coaches yeah. and scouts are still looking. They still know what they're looking for. You're going to know yeah. that okay, that kid going to put up 20, chuck 23s. We're going to make 13. That's who I need. Eventually, the kid that's yeah. still wilding, you know, will realize it. But if you're in the league right now and you just chucking ish up, like you getting your ass up to trade it, yeah. you know. So, that's, that's literally what's happening. Yeah, it's still respect to the game, but I understand what you mean. Things have changed, but I, I do like these young cats a lot. I, I think I'm I'm excited for the um the future of the NBA. I just hope like I, I'm worried about the whole social media stuff and like evolution and technology and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I hope that doesn't cause too much of an effect on the league. What you what you mean about like social media stuff? Like we don't really be, we don't really need to be in all these like NBA players businesses. I don't need to know who Ben Simmons just married or like, yeah. I don't need to know like about this NBA's personal life or like 
stuff like that. I actually do feel like it also really kind of like gets on the NBA players' mental. It's mm. something that we don't see, you know, and just Generation Z, like, People be like, oh, they so soft or whatnot. No, I just think that they're a lot more bold when it comes to like speaking out. You know what I'm saying? Mental health mm-hmm. was always an issue. We we just grew up in a generation where like it wasn't okay to speak, you right, know. Right. Um, so yeah, just the social media stuff, I think, you know, I love social media, don't get me wrong, but like there still needs to be a balance. And I like, you know, just technology, like. I guess I'm thinking a little bit overboard. Like, I don't want them to create no shoes that's going to make you jump nine, ten feet off the ground. Like, just I'm buying those. Yeah. <laughs> keep, it, keep, it funky, keep, it, keep it natural, you know what I'm saying? But if there's any technology to definitely, you know, refrain from them getting these industries, I'm all for it because I can't go another season missing KD not being able to play or, like, yeah. play missing, like, two seasons. Like, that is just sucks. Yeah. Yeah, and this is just, it's kind of like, I don't know if the, tr- what type of training they got them doing now, because back in the day, they ain't really get hurt as much as they get hurt now. So, you think so? The, the athletes and that, but I don't even know if it's the, re- yeah, I don't think, I don't think they used to get as hurt that much. I think a lot of it got to do with probably the AAU circuit. Like when they, yeah, come, yeah, by the yeah. time they come into the league, they done played thousands of games. Very true. You know what I mean? So it's a lot more wear and tear on the body, but I think it's the AU circuit. I think it's the the diet as well, too. I think um yeah, AU circuit, diet. Um I also feel like there probably was a lot of injuries back in the day. In in I'm sorry, injuries back in the day, but like we didn't have social media or like we was too young to really like keep up to date. I like think about somebody got an ACL injury like 30 years ago, which I knew was a thing. It's over. It's done. It's done. Now done. you get an ACL injury, you can come back and, and play ball. Right. But like we didn't hear about that growing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just it's just a different. I mean, thank thankfully, like you said, technology is different. You know, modern medicine is different, so it's kind of giving these athletes some more leeway. But I mean, we'll see. You'll see the you'll see the overall effects of social media and all of that. We still kind of learning, you know what I mean? We, you have we to. still going through it. You guys to you can't ignore it. It's a part of life. Like mm-hmm. business wise, like you gotta you gotta figure it out. TikTok, yeah. Trilla, uh man. Like, Wait, so you on the, all those? You on you on TikTok and uh Snap? I'm not on TikTok, but my brand is on TikTok. Um and I've been looking into Snapchat too, just for any of the resellers or anybody in the fashion that's listening. So Snapchat got this like VR thing going on. So like people supposedly can like try out your clothes on Snapchat and see how it looks. Oh wow. Yeah. So Snapchat's been doing some amazing things on the low. So I want to look into Snapchat. And that's for TikTok. TikTok, I think, was the most used app or something like that last year that have more users something yeah, about having i did more read users. that i saw yeah. that on the business insider for sure right so anything that leads to you know more revenue streams more merch love it and it's content you know as a fashion person content is king i think for me um so for yeah the, but I'm not, I'm not on those i i don't even have twitter no more my brand has a twitter only thing i own personally right now is Instagram and Facebook. Well, share share your uh your Instagram so people can connect with you if they if they want to reach out. Gosh, I could type it here or I just say yeah, uh, yeah tell them, you know. Uh, yeah, them. so I mean Instagram is Quasi Paul underscore official. So that's K W A S I P as in Paul A U L underscore official. If you guys want to follow me on my personal IG, it's I am Sam Watcher. Watcher is spelled not how it looks. It's E as a boy, O as an Oscar, A as an apple, K as in kite, Y as in yellow, and E as an egg. I mm. am Sam Watcher. My man gave the phonetics. All right. <laughs> you get me messed up at work and stuff. <laughs> I already know. But yo, thank you for your time, brother. This was dope. You uncovered everything from business, creativity, and un- Basketball talk, everything. So right. definitely, definitely appreciate your time. Um, speaking about bas- 
you know, too, we got something yeah. cooking. And, uh, and uh, I'm glad you touched on that because we got something cooking in December. So if we do run it back, again, I'd love to run this back and give you more details once we get that locked in. But this basketball and fashion, it's going to be interesting. Absolutely. I'm going to definitely have you back because I think for me this year, I'm just taking I'm taking business and I'm taking my usual approach different. And this is yeah. something I'm, I'm, I'm I gotta say on the on the pod, so hopefully some people can gain some inspo from this. I I used to do things very, like just bullish, like, oh, we about to do this. I'm all I'm all hands on deck, and I'm just grinding. Like that would just be me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to not like grind as much in the sense like I'm still trying to have that tenacity and be, you know, tenacious in my in my moves in my business moves. But at the same time, I'm trying to really hone in on people. Right. Like, get have more conversations with people. It sparks ideas. It, it sparks community. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's literally that synergy, that sharing of 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 game. And exactly. I think as many podcasts that's out there, and there's so much of them now, it's, it's almost like annoying. But yeah. it's not a lot of channels where people get to see, you know, two black men having some some real conversations about several different stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm going to put my do my part however I can. You know what I mean? And keep sharing my platform. You know what I mean? Oh, smooth, smooth, smooth. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all tuned in. So I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, no doubt, bro. This was dope. So uh, shout out to everybody that was in the live chat. Um, definitely appreciate the support. And we're going to see you guys in the next one. Peace. Uh, peace.